Caddis Max. I'm here this time. We're reviewing a Sola PC300. This is a resonant transformer base power line voltage regulator and power conditioner. I'm sorry about the uh, confusion of my last video about the APC 1200 watt power line voltage conditioner and regulator. That's what this is also is a conditioner and regulator. I'd used a lot of terminology like boost and buck. These type of power conditioners, this Sola, that larger APC, and then of course the smaller APC, what they do is that they are designed for environments where you have wide swings in your power line voltages. And sometimes whether lights or electronics will get really bright or will shut down or you have lots of electrical items that seem to be failing after a few months or if it's an item that should last many years, it's just failing after a year. Many of that can be, those types of issues can be attributed to having wide swings. Now, some people live in areas where the power is just really reliable and very stable. These types of devices won't help you. When I talk about boost and buck, these devices, whenever the voltage goes down too much, they will provide a boost. This unit will boost that voltage back up again to get it to the nice 120 volt level. Bucking is when your the voltage coming in is already way too high, and so it's gonna. And the term is called bucking, where it actually will cut it off and act, and reduce it down to being 120 volts. And there's two or three, I should say, primary ways of doing that. And that's one is a battery backup power supply where your voltage gets too low and it switches over to the battery. And then there are non-battery based units, which obviously won't work if the power completely turns off, but will work when there is pretty wide swings. If you live in an area like I do where 120 volts is a standard voltage, these units, your voltage can swing anywhere from as low as 90 volts to all the way up to 140 volts. And this unit and like these APCs will help stabilize that. Now the difference between this APC and this SOLA is this uses what's known as an auto transformer and then relays where this uses something called a resonant transformer. And the difference is, is that this unit only operates in 10 volt steps, which means that your incoming voltage would have to drop 10 volts or more for this to start to come into play. And if it does drop, say, to 108 volts, this will detect that and will provide a boost at a 10 volt increment and will boost it, say you dropped 108. This unit would increase it to 118 volts. And it can do that two times. So if your voltage dropped to 98 volts, this could bump it up by two steps of 10 to get it back up to 118 volts. It can also buck, which means it, if your voltage is too high coming in, that it can drop it down in 10 volt increments. The difference with the SOLA and its resonant transformer is that it can do the same thing essentially when your voltage is too high or too low it will adjust it to being continuous but it doesn't do it in 10 volt steps it does it continuously on a smooth path so if uh, your volts go up a couple this will help drop it down a couple but in a continuous smooth fashion infinitely variable not it doesn't have one volt or five volt or ten volt steps now there are some issues because of the particular type a very special type of transformer that's in these and i can't explain exactly how the transformer works but that's how these operate these are entirely based off just a transformer there isn't any relays or control electronics or anything like that inside them so they're very reliable very simple Unfortunately, they are very inefficient. They are very noisy as far as the physical amount of electrical hum. This thing really hums loudly. And due to the nature of how they work, even though they can provide near perfect voltage regulation, even though you can have a lot of crazy swings, like if you're just plugging in and unplugging or turning on and off a vacuum cleaner or large motors just repeatedly, this thing uh, well, the power coming out of it will be near perfect, but besides it being really heavy and really outsized for the amount of power, this thing is 300 watts and the darn thing weighs 20 pounds at least.
to give you an idea, the auto transformer based one, this one that uses relays and goes up in set steps of 10 volts at a time, is twice the power, 600 watts, and weighs about five pounds less than this does. The other difference is these other power conditioners I've showed you, if they get overloaded, they will still uh, continue to deliver the power and so they have fuses to prevent them from overheating and burning out. These type of resonant transformer power conditioner, line voltage regulator and power conditioners, don't usually have circuit breakers or fuses. That's because one of their Achilles heel is that if you overload them, if you put more than 300, try to put something that uses more than 300 watts into it, soon as it becomes overloaded, then its voltage will crash. Kind of like if you have a light bulb connected to a battery, it'll be nice and bright. And then if you take a piece of wire and put it across the same battery, that light bulb will essentially turn off because all the power is going to that piece of wire you just shorted the battery out with. And it's a, kind of a poor analogy, but that's how these work. Instead of it overheating and needing to rely on a circuit breaker or fuse the blow to prevent a fire, instead, it just won't deliver more than 300 watts. If you try to plug a, a house heater into it, like that APC unit, it would run that heater for about a second or two before the circuit breaker blew. This, the heater just wouldn't work at all. And it would seem strange because you can plug a couple hundred watts of light bulbs into it, but as soon as you overload it, it just won't provide the voltage. And it's kind of strange and it's a big issue with these things. So they always have to be way oversized. Like this 300 watt, in practicality, you wouldn't want to really plug more than 200 watts worth of stuff into it unless it really is like LED light bulbs because otherwise when you turn stuff on, there'll be a big draw of current to power it up and that can overload this and it will cause the voltage to crash because you'll go beyond that 300 watt limit. It really is like an absolute hard ceiling. And that's the other issue with these is they don't handle surge power like running motors. unless they're significantly oversized. Now, Sola makes huge ones, versions of these units, I mean 10 and 100,000 watts for using and manufacturing and medical facilities, those types of things. But they're always just absolutely massive, absolutely way oversized for how much they, uh, load you may end up placing on them. Now those two units, this and the APC I've been showing, all adjust voltage. Now there's th these, which are isolation transformers, and they are pretty much the best form of power line noise and uh, electromagnetic interference uh, noise filtering that you can get. And so when it comes to power conditioning, you have three transformer-based uh, options, which is an isolation transformer, which is super high quality filtering, but it can't do anything. If you know, if your power, you have the power line voltage, you have a brownout or something on your power line. Uh, these can't do anything about that. The other two units use different forms of transformers in order to help not only provide power filtering, although the filtering isn't as good as an isolation transformer. You may actually use one of these attached to one of these so that you have ultimate filtering as well as line voltage uh, compensation. Now this isolation transformer I just plugged in, it's actually a pretty noisy one. I'm going to do a review of actually a larger one which is super quiet and they tend to be super quiet but if you listen you can barely hear that. Now I'll go ahead and turn on the Sola. I should mention that these that use relays and what is known as an auto transformer to regulate the voltage are also super duper quiet unless they're you know you really loaded up or powering a, a big computer or something like that otherwise they are virtually silent which is not the case and the, one of the biggest issues with these resonant transformer ones is that they work so well they provide such clean power like a really high fidelity high end uh, audio amplifier, a Class A amplifier. This would be like considered the Class A of power conditioning. They just have a lot of special considerations. And the reason that these aren't used with audio equipment is because they are super duper noisy. And here, I'll put this near the... 
Now you can hear that, and that's what's really unfortunate. And when you actually put a load, plug something into it, it just gets louder. It's like, and it ends up being pretty unbearable. The biggest issue with these, now these are used as in the same situation as those other devices from protecting stereo equipment, medical equipment, but the Solas have a kind of a special niche, which is used in photography and in dark rooms, working with enlargers and various lights because the nature of the way they work they provide such smooth and perfect power regulation that when you're doing working with photography even if you have a power fluctuation the output of the light bulb does not change at all and so you'll find these associated with photography quite often at the end of this video we'll take a quick look inside I'll do one last follow-up video using this Variac and just demonstrating with a multimeter the difference between an isolation transformer, an auto transformer voltage regulator, and then one of these resonant transformer voltage regulators. But in this video, since it's mainly about this solo unit, we will do the test that I normally do or that I have done before, which is I'm going to hook a multimeter up to the back of this solo. And then I have this special device, which is a uh, variable transfer auto transformer. And this allows me to vary the amount of voltage. So I have it set to 120, and we'll start off with this. And then I'll show you as I adjust the, out, the voltage lower or higher, this would be simulating power line issues where the voltage is going too high or too low. And you can see how this unit reacts on the multimeter. I'll actually just put the multimeter on top. We will plug this in appropriately here. Sorry about that awkward pause. Sometimes the pause button doesn't uh, activate when I want it to. Let me clean this up and we'll take a quick look inside this. All right, here we are looking inside. Odd, uh, whoops, almost lost that. Oddly enough, the indicator light that goes to the top of the case, which is like the, if we can get that in frame, there it is, is like the worst position ever for an indicator light on top of the case like that. Uh, and they just have it plugged into the power outlet. It's a 120 volt neon bulb. It's kind of funny. So we can see inside here that these really aren't super intended for um, the greatest amount of noise filtering. An isolation transformer will do much better. These are set up really for that voltage regulation. We don't have any uh, capacitors. We don't have any form of surge protection. These are relying a lot on the design of this transformer. So remember, this is 300 watts, half the power of that APC unit, which weighs less and is smaller. This isolation transformer is 500 watts, and it's 5 pounds lighter and much smaller. This is the special type of transformer, and it looks weird. It's not like a normal style where it's just like one bulk of wire wrapped around another. You have like these two separate coils that are physically separated from the larger center coil. This big capacitor here is not actually connected to the sockets per se for uh, noise filtering, this is connected to one of the windings in the transformer setting up some kind of resonance. And that's where it just, it totally confuses me trying to even read how it works, but somehow with the capacitor and the special balance with the certain windings, uh, it sets up some type of system where it always wants to output, you know, right at about 120 volts. And I believe that has also something to do with the 60 hertz uh, cycle here. This unit, I, and somebody, uh, hopefully somebody who watches this will be able to confirm this, but I believe if you this is plugged into, say, a European market where it has 50 cycles, it will output a totally different voltage just on a uh, variation of the frequency of the power. So these, I believe, are sensitive to frequency changes. Anyway, I wanted just to show inside because you saw on the meter how incredible, how just perfectly smooth and linear this was about uh, on 
keeping that voltage well under control, even when we have the input going down as low as 60 volts. Somehow, amazingly, this was still able to output 120 volts. But all they're doing it with is a very special transformer and a capacitor. Literally, there's two parts, of two electrically related parts in here besides the switch and the outlets. Super duper simple. Anyway, I'm going to end this review here. It was kind of long in detail, but these types of power conditioners are by far the rarest. But you always know them. They're Sola, but there are a few other brands. But you always can identify them because you'll find that the wattage on them always seems to be really low for how big and heavy they are. And if you can ever peek through the vents and they have this weird looking transformer and a giant capacitor, then you know what it is. It's a very good type of power conditioner. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.